morning, good morning. It is Wednesday. So that means it is house tours day as well. Um, I'm going to send out a quick tweet just to kind of wake everybody up. And um, just going to mention, uh, apparently, uh, I was off yesterday afternoon, evening, and I missed all the excitement. Apparently, the realms kind of had a hiccup, and uh, there was some concern that maybe I wouldn't even get to do the uh, tourist this morning, but it seems to be working okay. Um, I visited all the homes this morning that I was planning to visit just to double check and make sure everybody was working all right. But as far as I can tell, uh, there's been nothing uh, amiss this morning. Um, but um, for those of you that missed it, like me, apparently there was um, some something to do with the house server, I guess, the housing server. Um, it kind of borked things up for both NA and EU, and they had to do like a shutdown uh, to kind of uh, fix whatever was wrong. And um, good morning, soccer. Glad you could join us. And uh, it seems like uh, apparently some of the progress that folks did yesterday evening, I think it was like a three hour period or something. Um, it got rolled back, so they lost uh, some of their progress, um, but they are being compensated with some Omnibits. So um, if you feel like you were affected by that, be sure and check the forum um, for details. Um, it's in the actual like news and, and game update section, I think. Um, but uh, I guess, thankfully, I wasn't around to, to witness it or panic about it, so um, I guess that was a plus. Um, but uh, I feel sorry for those that were involved and, and if you guys uh, had anything go amiss for you, you know, I'm sad that that was uh, the case, but it looks like things are in order. I didn't see anything weird or anything. So, um, But uh, I, I kind of wondered if maybe it had something to do with the, um, the things that's going to go on today because from what I remember, Today being the 16th, that means that the PvP uh, realms will be merging with their PvP, uh, PvE counterparts. So Loom and I will be joining on to uh, Javit, and I guess this, what is it, Warhound will be going on to Entity. Um, so I assume that's coming this this evening with the the maintenance for today. And maybe somebody accidentally flipped a switch a little too early or jumped the gun. I don't know what was up, um, what would cause it to kind of work up suddenly. But, um, yeah, so if you are on a PvP server and uh, didn't know it, apparently you're going to be joining the PvE ones. And for those that forgot about it, that is supposedly happening today from what I understand. Um on the plus side, that means more homes that may come into the mix, which is a good thing. Um, you know, just because people engage in the PvP side of, uh, you know, the the content doesn't mean that they don't also build. It's just like it's a misnomer to say, you know, that raiders don't house and housers don't raid and that kind of thing. There's a good mix of people that like housing, but they also enjoy other uh, aspects of the game. And so I expect we'll be seeing some additional homes to be able to admire and be inspired by and all of that good stuff. So yeah, we're on exile side. Um, I've got five homes for you today. And um, there's some, some really doozies. Um, they usually always are, but you know, it's always nice to kind of play it up for those that are, you know, watching. And um, so let's get started. Our first house is um, by one that we've visited a number of their homes um, in the past, and they're always um, something interesting. Uh, this one is uh, Duck Door No. Uh, it's called Protostar Future Living. Um, you might remember uh, some of their past builds, like I think it was um, uh, Castle Baskerville and... Uh, uh, Dr. Frankenstein. Dr. happens to be like uh, an ongoing name on there, but they also did the, with the, the castle um, thing. I think that's on Dominion's side. It was like uh, Sherlock Holmes or something. It's the same individual that's been building these. So um, 
from what I understand, I think they're pretty stretching it on the limit or have hit the cap. Hey, uh, Poi and Maddie, glad you could join us. Um, on the outside, at least. The interior, I think there's still room to go, but I think just due to the concept of what they did in the interior, there's really not, you know, you don't, sometimes you just don't want to add details just for the sake of adding details. You just want to, you know, leave it as what it needs to be. You only put in what you have to put in. The exterior is a little different because um, with the, the way they've got the limits divided, um, it makes it hard to do landscaping and the building and the details that go in the building. So uh, there's going to be some bits that feel a little bit more open, but guaranteed if they raise the limits, uh, these, you know, not just this one, but all of the, the housing plots will probably have, you know, their builders busily adding extra details that they wanted to add. Hey, Dr. Glad you could join us. Yeah, so it's like one one item shy of the cap. <laughs> well, you know, see, that's that just shows you it, it, it's just nuts. And what's crazy is you'll come across a plot that looks, it's not that this one looks empty, but it looks really crowded and packed, but still got lots of detail. And you're like, how did they squeeze out 2,500 in that? Um, personally, I don't think I've ever really capped too often. Uh, it's just because I, I don't know, I, I, I get close, but not, I don't think I just go to the max just to get to the max. Um, but um, anyway, this is a, like, a, I, I consider it kind of like a desert oasis. You've got the deserty scene, but there's, you know, water elements, obviously. You've got this nice little wake, uh, lake little thing coming out, and it carries on around the edge here. Um, it's always fun to see how people treat the entrance. Uh, in fact, I've been working on a new plot, but I've been struggling trying to put something in. I want to cover it, and I can't seem to get it to work right. There are items you can use to cover it, but you have to like size them just so, position them just so, and sometimes it can be a, a really big headache. Um, one of the big things besides uh, uh, making the crate storage bigger and the lighting amount bigger and you know various other things it would be wonderful if they would allow us either drop the barrier off it completely or just allow us uh, the opportunity to have different kinds of styles like they do with like the door or the roofing or stuff stuff like that so uh, we're just going to take a, a little walk around the edge first before we go into the main buildings and uh, just kind of, you know, look at what they've done with the uh, uh, the landscaping. Again, anyone that can make it kind of look like it's natural, I admire because I really am horrible at landscaping. I cannot stress that enough. Um, but you can see, like, uh, they're using mostly the sandstones. Um, a lot of the cactus plants that you would expect, some of the palm trees and things dead grasses as well you know you got the golden wheat grass here and then you've got the um, I guess that's Derridan uh, grass patch some bits of thorns and things a lot of things that you would expect in in the uh, uh, the desert kind of area here's a little uh, proto star ship delivering some goods maybe it's also bringing you know customers looking for a place to live I don't know It's one way of disguising, um, you know, hiding those bits that you don't want seen, like these parts, uh, adding extra elements to just kind of cover it up if you really don't want that showing. <clears throat> and being a desert, you don't really expect a lot of trees and stuff, so, you know, it, it is open, but that gives um, good views for the apartments out there. Yeah, that's kind of how I do, Ductor. I, I leave, um, or Ducky, I'm going to call you Ducky. <laughs> uh, I leave a little bit of elbow room in case, especially for like if new elements come out, 
um, or if I'm expecting something specific, like like when you do, uh, we were working on our Winterfest plots. We knew some new Winterfest items were coming out, so you didn't really want to build all the way up to the cap before you got access to a lot of those, because you could assume, well, I'm probably going to use some of that stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of a, a, a fine line you got to walk all the time. So here's a little bit of a uh, oasis little thing where you've got the little lake and the, the gondola sitting there. <clears throat> the notorious umbrella tree, massive umbrella tree. Usually you never see it like this. I, I've only seen maybe a, a handful of builders actually use it as the tree. Usually it's always upside down and they're using it for something else. It's got some really wimpy little whimpers out there. Here's a little camp. I'm not sure what's uh, what are you using for the little base here. It almost looks like chocolate too, but I, I know it's not the uh, barnacle weed because that the color the sh shaping looks different. Uh, one of the windows maybe the orange windows, like. Uh, the colorful one, maybe. Looks a little woody. Snow dusted stone upside down. Well, there you go. See, you wouldn't think that the stone would look like wood, but it does. It looks like wood to me. That's a pretty smeary thing. But then look at that. It looks a little. See, that's what it's, it's like the, the person that made the item kind of like, well, nobody's going to turn it upside down, so I can just kind of leave it unfinished or messed up and you get some weird little streakies like that. I don't know if it's something to do with how they make the uh, the models and how the colors and stuff kind of stretch or whatever. I guess if they gave us the ability to like just kind of stretch on one axis or something it would look like that. Very strange. So let me just um, kind of hop up here. Maybe. I'm like the world's worst jumper. Let's see if we can get a good overall shot of the building here before we go in. <clears throat> so um, you can see, uh, again, one of our fave pieces is the Hover Park um, building blocks. Again, it's one of the most versatile type of, uh, you know, group of building blocks we have. Um, and, you know, in the beginning, I was like, there's so many, and I just can't envision what they could be used for. But watching other people use them in their builds and the interesting um, combinations they make for different architecture types and roofs and buildings and, and uh, just all sorts of things, it's really uh, just shows how, how handy they are. And it would be great if we got another set or like um, was able to get different like colorings because, you know, the wood is great. It works for a lot of things, but it would be nice if that could come in like um, a metal or a brick or uh, some kind of white paneling or something, just some different textures. It would be great. And, the, you know, that wouldn't take a lot of time, I would think, you know, because, you know, all they're doing is redressing the same items, you know, and just giving them a different look. You know, that would be a cheap way of giving us extra blocks without really having to create some new stuff because they could just use the same bits and just paint them different. <laughs> so you can see it's basically um, two like apartment buildings. That's, that's what I call them. It might be offices too, but here's a little I guess we had an accident here. This little wagon is broken. These NPCs, folks find ways to use them in fun ways. I've seen them buried in snow and swimming and skiing and, and all sorts of things. I think this is a... Uh, uh, glass panels, I think, that's just been sunk down. So you just kind of barely see the glass, but the, the framework is nice. I love the metal bit of the frames. This looks like the riveted one. 
and then uh, I think it's the minion um, uh, fence posts. Now these, uh, I've seen them used like this, but uh, I've also seen them, we, I think we visited a house, or I know of a house that um, they really enlarged them really huge. You can actually walk through this gap. Um, it has no collision there, so I've seen people use them as like doorways. Um, so you got this big fancy ornament, and then they've got that doorway there. And I think on the bottom there's like a little weird grill. Um, that a lot of people like to use um, for vents and, and oven type things like that. Now, from what I understand, Duck, Ducky likes to use the uh, the weather vane element since it kind of looks like a duck. A little swanny, but Ducky too. I mean, it's it's a bird, a water bird. Um, a little icon, kind of like a, a trademark, sort of like me with my carrots and stuff. Um, I really like the uh, the design of the the little lettering here for the protostar apartment complex, and it's just using the hover part pieces. But look how clean and smooth, and I mean, you know, mat no matter how far away you get, you can still see what it is. The letters. Um, it almost looks like a, I don't know why, it looks like um, like a plug-in. It would be a good logo for a, an electric company or something. <laughs> I'm sure other people could come up with other things that it looks like, but that's what I'm going to go with. <clears throat> so, do you have a preference on which side I go in first? I'm just going to, let's just go right. <laughs> so, you can see that, the, again, it's hover part pieces. He's using the joint, um, the little the one that has like multiple sections. And from what I understand, these originally uh, opened up and uh, you had access to other parts of the, the apartment complex. But just due to, um, I think it was mostly the decor count, um, they had to uh, kind of rethink that. And so they just closed it off and made it these little um, like office uh, like the where the concierge is, he's the one where you sign in, and then you've got your little mailbox system. So here's your, this little makeshift uh, mailbox thing. It looks like uh, hover park pieces uh, being used for that. I don't know how exactly they, you know, it looks like the floors. Um, yeah, it just looks like the floor pieces, the, the really long ones, and just makes a nice little shelf and then they just put little doodads in. Um, I'm trying to remember what this was. No, the door is um, uh, the metal table and uh, I think the handle is one of the... Uh, no. What is that? What is that? <laughs> Ichthian chest. Okay, so this is the Ichthian chest, the little emblem. And it's a pretty cool, so I don't really know what that's supposed to be, the symbol. Uh, but you could probably use it for anything. I mean, maybe that's a piece of food, like a shrimp and, and a drink and, and everything, if you want it to be for a restaurant sign. Or maybe that's a plug-in with the light and, you know, it's, you know, an electrical outlet thing because you know you got the danger sign here what's the handle I can't remember what you said it was I'm so forgetful lately yes magnetized container that's what it was it's that very end where there's a little bit of a handle on it and that's what that is works really nice it blends I mean it looks like the same metal and everything and then of course you gotta see the little chairs and every one of them has a little ladder <laughs> ladder for uh, the poor little protostar guy, because he's got to get up there. So then we go off into the... Let me slow down there. <clears throat> slow motion run. Uh, so we come to the first uh, floor of this little apartment place. So you got the the restaurant area, the dining bar kind of thing. Section of stools. Got the little bar tap here. It's just uh, some posters being used as a little tray. It's a simple setup, but you know, granted, 
I'm sure he would love to add extra details, um, you know, add a few things on the tables themselves and 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 all that. But um, I think considering they've already basically hit the cap pretty good because it's really hard to fill in when you make your buildings really big um, to kind of look make it look occupied and uh, busy. But look at all those drinks. And even the sign, the sign's using several pieces because that's, uh, I think it's the octopus sign. So they're just showing the triangle parts just sunk in so that the green octopus isn't showing. It makes a little star. Maybe this is the star bar or the sun bar. It could be a sun. <clears throat> yeah. So this is the one end, and then if you go around on the other end, um, I guess the one side is the bar and the other side is the restaurant. So this is more like the food stuff. So here you have um, where you pick up your food, and that's like a huge plate of fruit there. And then they have this little faux door set up so that um, it gives indication that down below there's like the kitchen where they're cooking. And um, they're using the same handles as from the magnetized containers. And then they just, uh, it's the posters, the travel posters for the doors with uh, the granite floors for the windows. Simple, but very recognizable and, and different. Um, it's kind of like the toilets. No two are alike, the same way with the doors. And you can just come up with all sorts of nifty combinations just about anything goes, really. <clears throat> Look at the tables. It's just hover part pieces. I think those are the, I think it's edge, something edge. And it's like four pieces together to make the table. And uh, then repeating it and then just kind of sinking it down so it looks like it's got the bottom. Or maybe it's just shrunk down. So you've got the, the bottom, the fluted uh, base. Now that was the entrance where we come in. Now on the other side, let me just run over there. Notice they didn't do the fluted base here. They just got it like a little, like a spinning top kind of thing. Maybe the plan was to add the bases later. They didn't run out of space. So here we have um, the next floor. I'm not even going to say if it's second floor or first floor because it differs um, where I come from, this would be like the second floor, but from where I live now, it's called the first, I think, so it gets me confused. <clears throat> and then you come up on uh, oops, the apartments themselves. <clears throat> so you, for each one, you have um, a large... Um, you could use it as living space, bedroom, that kind of thing. You have your own little kitchenette. Look at how lovely the kitchen looks. I mean, even this, you know, a lot of people would feel inclined to kind of just make it straight, but the curve just kind of gives it a little character. Uh, it's a way of using a piece that you might not normally use. It works good, and notice they do it on both ends, so it matches. But it's a nice way of finishing it off rather than just, you know, doing the straight. And it's not that you can't do the straight parts, but uh, like the the backing, uh, the tiles for the, you know, the kitchen where you have some splatter and stuff like that. You don't want that. Um, the sink is just um, the bathroom sink. And then it's got the top of, um, I think it's one of the wine bottles. It could be just a regular bottle. It's the top of one of those for the little flipper switch thing. And then the inset part is um, uh, travel posters. And of course, the red moon bit for the drain. Same way with the oven, it's uh, travel posters. I love those travel posters. It's like a nice, you know, metal looking, smooth and clean, and it's straight. You don't have any of those weird edges and you know, wrinkles like you would with the, the metal planks and stuff. Um, these are great for uh, that stuff. Now the, the burners, um, 
I want to say those are the metal plates sunk down so you just see the trim, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> the buttons are, of course, the two of cups. Um, then you got more posters and glass, and then the Cassie and pillar for the handle there. And then the uh, vent above, again, uh, posters, a little bit of glass uh, there, and then the, uh, I think it's the marauder netting for the little grill thingy. Yeah, it looks like metal blow, bowl or plate. It's one of the two. Probably the bowl, because the plate probably would show a little bit uh, in the middle. But it works really nice for, you know, simple bird. You know, if they had the room to, to add more details, they could probably, like, do several rings, like two or three rings for each one. But this is a simple, easy, you know, you know what it is. As long as you know what it is, that's... You're going in the right direction. I will point out, look at the different materials. It's not just um, hover part pieces. You've got different textures and things depending on what part of the, the rooms you're in. You've got the granite walls here, um, exile arches, and then you've got this luxurious, excuse me, Dominion, um, or I guess that's Cassian walls. Then you got the granite for part of the kitchen. Um, and you even have these little details with the copper, uh, the two oak pillars. Uh, just kind of added decoration. It's things that, you know, some people won't notice or even take into consideration. I mean, like here, they could have left it all just the same, but they've added that extra little bit in. Um, it helps kind of segregate areas, your spaces. Um, and uh, a lot of people tend to forget that, even myself, I, I kind of forget to do that. Um, here we have um, the bathroom. And uh, I know for sure that's the metal plate for the mirror. Then you have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the ore and domes uh, and things for the sink bowls. A repeat of the Chua handles, you know, the cups for the Chua, the, the Chua cups for the handles. <laughs> and of course, the red moon vents for the drains. Um, the handles for the drawers look to be uh, one of the files, uh, but it could be one of the other bottles. The bottles and, and wine uh, bottles and things like that uh, are really great for knobs, like doorknobs and things. Just depends on how you're using them. If you don't have to worry about what's showing behind, like here, you could use any of them. Yeah, the travel posters, you basically just have to um, find all of the, uh, the keys for that particular episode or version of the poster. Um, since a lot of us use the posters where you're not actually seeing the, the picture, you could just unlock one of them, and then you've you've got access to it. But um, I think uh, Adventure Awaits is like the first one, and it's the cheapest. And so if you're just looking for the, the back of it, that would be the one I would go for. Um, but yeah, I think every zone has a, a particular set of tails, keys, and you have to find all the keys. And then once you find all the keys, you unlock the lore. Um, you get a like a special lore page. It shows the poster and everything. And then once you have that, it'll automatically unlock the decor for you. It's kind of a fun way of you know having interactive housing where you actually have to go out into the world and do some exploring before you can get that little goodie. There are a few I haven't unlocked. I think they're more Dominion um, in that area. Now, um, the drawers here, I think, are just a solid um, ore in walls. It's kind of hard to tell with the lighting. And then just divvied up with the, the Cassian, how that trim is, and they just layered it down so it, it divides it up. <clears throat> I think it's the Cassian floor just all the way down. And then, of course, you have uh, the toilet which looks to be um, 
a, a number of domes layered differently to make it look like this part is the lid. You know, we don't have to get too persnickety about like, um, would that actually function? You know, there's no uh, hinges or anything. As long as it looks like the part, um, you're good to go. And again, see, this doesn't look like any other toilet I've come across, but you know, it's cleverly put together. It looks like a couple of uh, exile domes snuck into the, the Orin one. Works really nice. Now I think, whoops, the little, the little button, again, is the metal plate. It's just sunk in so that you just see the bottom of it um, for the little blusher button thing. And then a cylinder for the, the base. Really simple. You know, if you want to get super detailed, you could add some kind of piping and, and things like that. Um, but, you know, just the indication is good enough. It works well, especially if you're tight on uh, decor. <clears throat> now, I think this is a bracket from one of the boardwalk pieces. So it's that um, that really bright orangey-brown wood it's all kind of hammered together, and it's got those metal brackets. I think that's what that is. It looks like it anyway. And then they've just put a, a chew-a-cup on it to make the little shower head there and then they used uh, the cups as well for uh, the knobs and then just glass for the for the shower part itself now I don't want to just go well everything's the same but just to give you an idea, you know, you've got the nice views. This would be a great place for um, those that want to do um, kind of like with Katia's uh, apartment place. Uh, role players could come and maybe make arrangements uh, with Ducky to uh, say, hey, I'd like to buy or rent a space and then they could decorate it themselves you know granted they can't do that right now because the the limit is reached but um you know if ever whenever uh the decor goes up that will give uh some room for people to kind of uh, interact with the, this type of uh, a living space so here we have a little different version of the kitchens a little smaller a little more compact um, even the flooring is different and everything, but some of the elements are similar. So it's kind of the same, but not. And I like um, how it's, I, I kind of like the other one preference wise, but uh, this works really well too. You've got the little bar, you could have some chairs, and um, this would be where you could you know, have your cutting board and stuff. And then here you could have some the little drying rack for your dishes and things like that. <clears throat> and then of course the bathroom for this one is uh, positioned in a way that um, the, the toilet actually is joined by the other one on the other side. <clears throat> okay, all right. Well that makes sense. But like this is a cylinder and the way they've got it set up, it's if I was to be able to see the other side, you'd see the other toilet right directly on, on the opposite end bit of the wall. So it works out nicely. You know, if you can get a, an item to do double the duty, that's um, a big plus. Um, because then you don't have to use two cylinders to make two different toilets. You can use one cylinder and you get for both. Um, so that's helpful when you're pinching for decor bits. So this one just has the one sink. So it's a smaller apartment on this side than the other. So here's like the little bedroom. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's one floor and then you go up see did I go up in here okay that's the other one so yeah I'm gonna get lost and it's not even that big of a place 
There's only one way I can go up, and I'm still going to get lost. So you can see, basically, it's the same setup for each floor on this side. But like I said, if the uh, decor count allows uh, at some point, um, they could go out as far as decorating it for different races. <clears throat> Or, um, you know, if they arranged it with other builders to come and decorate a particular apartment for themselves, then that would open up, you know, different ideas. Maybe work it out so that uh, each uh, individual gets, you know, X amount of decor that they can spend on their room and then let them have it and decide how they're going to spend that, you know, 100, 200 decor. <clears throat> So again, you've got the small apartment on the one side and the large apartment on the other side. Both have um, great views. Notice they've turned off the, the neighbors so you don't see those big floating islands. It's just nice, pretty sky with that little bit of uh, scenery out there. Now, I had breakfast and my stomach is still growling. <clears throat> And then I think this is the top floor. And I'm not sure what the plan was for this. Did you have a specific? Yeah, I think that that would be fun. It's kind of like a guild made of mine. Um, <clears throat> well, see, this one's like really open. So if this was yours, Maddie, this would be. <laughs> You'd have free reign to just do whatever you want. But I figured this was more like probably a community area. <clears throat> oh, okay. So like a penthouse. You just have one big giant space. See, look at that. And you can spy on your neighbors, check out what they're doing, and say, hey, I like that table. I'm going to build one over here. <laughs> Look, they're, they're putting up the signs or taking them down or something, working on it over there. I find that funny. But, uh, yeah, one of my roommates, um, that's what she did. She had um, that pirate theme and said, hey, I want you guys to come and I, I think there was like, I don't know, five or six of us that took her up on the offer. And there's little sections. I'll have to tour it sometime. Um, I tend not to tour uh, my guildmate stuff because, uh, well, for one, I think she's still working on it, but <clears throat> I don't want to show favoritism or anything. Okay, where in the heck? Oh, okay, over here. I kind of forgot where I needed to go. So that's the one side. We'll move on um, back through the tunnel. We'll come back to the hatch house here. But you can see it's kind of mirrored. You now you've got your own little concierge on this side, the sign in the door, and the little mailbox uh, system here. I like the gifts. You now, even though it's not Winterfest, you can still use those in so many ways. Maybe it's somebody's birthday or anniversary or something. So on this one, they've got it set up for a stage. And from what I understand, like when it was Winterfest, um, they would like put out some stuff here. So it would go for seasons, depending on the entertainment that's coming. <clears throat> you can use a microphone, you can set up a live band, a comedy show. You could set up some tables and chairs and then have, you know, some live entertainment going on. Have a comedian come and tell jokes. And then over here you have like, um, I guess this would be uh, where you would uh, like purchase your room, your, your apartment. Uh, I guess you'd like, these are the pamphlets describing the different living spaces available. And uh, I love the little chairs. I, I told them that these remind me of the Jetsons. That's what it looks like, a little Jetson chair in the futuristic. And again, it's just the little, 
think it's the edge piece and then just a little dome with some cushions set in it. Simple, but you know, very cute. I like that. Here's a good use of the uh, protostar shells. I like the little mini signs. I don't have my sound on, so I wonder if there's like conflicting noises coming from there, but like little keepsakes and stuff that you could get. Excuse me. I'm just like burping and everything. Disgusting. <clears throat> okay, so this one goes from the other side. Of course. So then we come to the next floor here, and it's under construction. You got the warning sign saying, do not come in, and then I'm just going to go snooping around anyway so that you can see the different spaces and how it looks. So here we have the building materials. We got the little pallets with all the little bits. And here's the guy working on it. He's got his little work table. I like that. That's good. It's just two by fours and the metal edged ones. Got the little hammer and stuff. Got the little, what are those called? Um, the saw horses or work horses? Things that you would like put the wood on and then you rent and saw it up. That's good. I like that. Again, nice use of the welder. I have mine. I have yet to use them, but I see people use them in fun ways, making it look like they're repairing something. Or uh, I've seen a few that just use the animation part that you don't even see the person, and they just want that sparkle bit coming out. That's a good way to kind of show, yeah, I'm putting your, your sink together. So here's where the, the sink would go. <laughs> and the oven would go here. I like that. This is a clever way of kind of saying, yeah, I've got a lot of stuff to do, but <laughs> to kind of show it's coming, it's it's getting there. So here's the bathroom. Again, it looks similar to the other side, but you know, that's kind of how apartment complexes are. You know, there's a lot of sameness to it. Um, it's the, the personal decorations and, and furniture that you add in that give it its personality. So here's another little work table. It's a really nice, simple, I mean, you could just kind of extend that, change it up a little bit, and that'd be a nice picnic table. Now, even though we have picnic tables, some people just want different. Notice they kind of, it's not like it's a perfect stack. That's a real good way when you're doing stacks. Now, the only one that I kind of like prefer to be perfect is like a stack of plates or a stack of bowls sometimes. Sometimes I switch them a little bit, you know, make them a little wonky. But laying them perfectly flat, it would just look like a weird square, like lump of something. But alternating the positioning, the little rotation just a little bit here and there, that's really good to indicate that there's, you know, several pieces. Little, little things like that, little details that uh, a lot of people don't think about doing. <clears throat> so here's where the bedroom be in the bathroom. Oh, now my nose is itchy. Yeah, I think it's called workhorses. I think. I I don't know. Again, it's like me. I, I don't know what they're called, but I I recognize what it is. But. <clears throat> The light is going bye bye here. Here they didn't even have the door installed. It's just kind of sitting there. He's working on it though. <laughs> rush, rush, rush! Finish it up. Here's the here's the guy. He's working on a sign. Got his bricks and fuel. Well, I don't know what he wants the fuel for, but maybe for his welder thing. Again, see how it's kind of lopsided. It's not all perfectly straight. It's just a little bit of wonkiness to it. It's uh, more natural than just having it perfect. I like the metal panels there. It's just benches sunk down. Kind of give it that look. Here again, a little bit of off 
set different buckets. Uh oh, I feel the sneeze coming on. I'm just going to do all sorts of stuff this morning, apparently. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I, I think it would be grand if they expanded on the, the limits. You know, I know there's reasons behind they say that it has to do with like um, when a plot loads, it could be like an excessive amount of um, load on like a, a personal computer. Not everybody can handle it. In fact, I know of a few plots that supposedly actually crash most people that try to visit, or not most, but some. And it's those that they're trying to avoid. They don't want to, to allow us to just go berserko. But I don't know. I think most people would just like the opportunity to, to do what? There's another floor, isn't there? I think I missed the stairs. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> so this is the little penthouse room up top on this side. Again, you can see the little details in here, but it's just one of those things folks miss a lot. It's like in the tunnel, um, I like the little X pattern that's repeated. Yeah, it's, whoops, I kept walking in the wall. Uh, I think even now with just the 2500, a lot of people um, probably experience loading issues. You know, I know I've crashed a few times, but I think that's more to do with um, some of the add-ons I use. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think I have like the top type of computer, but uh, uh, I can sympathize with those that have computers that maybe struggle a little bit just with the game itself and then to have to come into a home that just, you know, got so much going on it just kind of works it up. So I can understand they're wanting to kind of limit us, but uh, it would be nice if we had the option, you know. Maybe not everyone would upgrade to, you know, 10,000 pieces, but for those of us that want to, you know, we could just, you know, say, warning, you know, enter at your own risk kind of thing. But you can't hardly see it because of the lighting, but the way that uh, those pieces work, it has that X and it's just followed through because they're using the same little junction for each little area. I, I like that. So the last thing I think we have to look at is uh, the bunker house. And I love this little idea. And <clears throat> I love the extra details that I don't recall seeing the last time I was here. Um, but uh, the bunker house and the interior of any of the, the prefab homes um, have a lot more luxury as far as uh, you can go pretty nuts with a lot of the detail because you don't have that uh, extra bit of setting up the landscape and building the building itself, you can just add all of your little bits. And how you divide the space is more important than um, the, the structure of the space, generally speaking. So I don't know, uh, do you recall what your, your decor limit is here? Because there's certainly a lot of bits going on. Okay, remind me what this piece was. Um, I want to say it was the medical monitor, I think is what you told me. I love the little grid pattern. I wouldn't doubt people can find other ways of using this kind of weirdly as a game board or, um, I don't know, targeting thing. Put a little X or a little dot, you know, red dot or something. Medical curtain, that's what it is. It was medical something, I just can't remember what it was. Um, and then of course the little bulletin board here is just a picture uh, turned so that you see the back of it. Uh, you know, notes, that's really fun. A little trash can even. Uh, it's just, um, looks like 
curved walls, the Orin and the uh, Castian versions, and then probably a uh, Castian tube, and then the dome to top it off. You know, most people would look at that and go, that looks like, you know, it could be a bullet, a silo, R2-D2, you know, but trash can works uh, really well too. So here's um, the little desk, the little check-in desk. Look, he's got his little ladder again. <clears throat> and uh, look at the little pen that you sign the book with. It's just, uh, just again, it's an indication, but you know what it is. It's the little dome with a, a looks like a chua pillar stuck in it. And that's your little little pin. You know, you see those at the bank. Sometimes they got the little chain attached to it because, you know, everybody walks away with the pins and they've got that stuck in there. But this one's got his little T. And uh, then, of course, the design in the back. Again, it looks like a sun. And it's just having fun with twisting and making a pattern with the, the framed glass. Can make all sorts of nifty things and then they've repeated it here to border the nice little clock and what's nice with these patterns of glass depending on how you layer it it makes that glass more opaque so it really brings out some pretty designs and this one's just it looks like a little sun now, the clock itself, it looks like it is, uh, I want to say, two by fours, just the edge of it for the arms, and then the end of a Cassian pillar for the, the centerpiece there. For the brackets, I'm not sure. It looks like the corners of some glass windows, just to give that little bit for the, uh, the time, you know, the three o'clock, six, nine, what it looks like to me. Oh, is it windows as the arms as well? Well, I'll see that. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell, but yeah, that's the edge of the frame. So it's just windows galore here, except for this part here. Very pretty, very classy looking. For the benches, it's uh, hover part pieces, just the curved and the straight. Um, I think it's the full pipe. It could be the half pipe as well. It's kind of hard to see, but I think it's the full one because it's like solid. The half pipe is just like a, well, half. <laughs> but very elegant, like, you know, modern furniture there for the, for the benches. Let's see, which way do I need to go? This way? Well, let's go this way. Notice the little the little duckies. So here's the, the locker room where you can um, put your personal belongings so that nobody can uh, mess them up, you know, like your wallet and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so they've got some indication. Well, why anyone would take their bra off right there, I don't know. But um, this, again, is uh, I think it's the, the med kit. And then in combo with um, a couple of the uh, magnetized containers, both for the handle and for that fancy little lighting. You know, you could use these as uh, bank safes, um, some kind of just extra gadget in a computer room or whatever. Yeah, Maddie, he's added a lot since the last time I was here. I mean, look at these uh, mirrors. It's the same thing that they did with the, the clock, but they've added that metal plate to give that reflective quality to the to the glass, to the mirror part. It's really nice. And look, repeated the bench, just one bar, and then added some glass to make this nice glass shelf. Very nice. I mean, it almost looks too pretty to be in this particular facility, but... I mean, that would be lovely for a, a bedroom. Um, uh, in fact, I, I think I'm going to borrow this for something else um, that I'm thinking of. But uh, uh, for even um, round windows, um, like inset in a house, that would be a, a nice, pretty decoration. Like have the 
the hover part pieces going around to make it solid, like those fancy porthole windows or something. That would be really nice. Um, turn it uh, horizontally and you have a really pretty table. Um, something like that. So a lot of things you could do with that, I'm sure. But it's a really simple, just twit, 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 turn it around and there you go. So repeating the, um, the shower type stalls, same way in the apartments, it's just basically the same bits here for this community shower. And then on this side, You have, um, I don't know what this is called. It's not really the boiler room, just the water room, I guess. Um, so you have the mop and bucket, the, the, the mandatory mop and bucket, but then you have a lot of tanks, a lot of um, curved pipes and cylinders um, for these little pipe works. You know, these joints here are the red moon vents. Um, I don't know what specific tanks you're using for all these little handle bits. It looks like this just sunk down, but then it's not exactly the same, so I don't know which one they're using, but um, you can see how it really helps to sell that these are different kinds of valves that you have to adjust. Using the frozen lake as spilled water that's uh, on the floor. All these little weird protostar bits making noise. It's a really fun way of doing that. <clears throat> Tech room. The bells and whistles. Well, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Let's close that up and then we'll head upstairs. Notice the ceiling. Now you'll see that it's also the floor up above, but uh, an interesting way of just kind of making it look different than always using the same, you know, kind of flooring over and over. So here we have the pool room. How crazy nuts is this? There's just a lot of stuff going on. So you have the benches repeated, but then they enlarged it, added an extra couple of layers, and you have a table, a little picnic table set. Again, it looks very modern. It's not even joined, it's just there's some spacing and it's just kind of understood that it goes together. It works really nice. Repeated the trash can. So you, again, this helps tie in um, a space where they're using the same elements. Benches, it's pillars for the, uh, the jumping platforms. Here you have uh, the lifeguard. With his med kits, his his little ladder, and of course the little lifesaver bit. Uh, the pool itself, um, I think, is one one big waterfall. I think just kind of oversized and laid out so that it works really good. I don't see any seams off the top, so I think it's just one piece. But it works really well. The only disappointing thing is like when you dive in, you clearly see that it's not actual water. It's just, it's the only fussy thing that most people have with the new water decor is it doesn't actually behave like water. It looks really great from above, but if you enter it, then it could kind of kills it. And of course you don't actually swim in it. But it does give us a, a closer look at to what's going on below. So you have like the exile walls um, for the red striping for the lanes. Then you've got the um, uh, hover part pieces for the, the numbers. Very nice, clean numbers. Worked out really good with how they're using them. For the three, the four, very smooth. A lot of people will be going, I'm going to use those. Here's that, that little bit part for that uh, Dominion pillar I was talking about that they used outside for part of the fencing. That's that little bit. Looks like a nice drain. Now the red moon vents work well for a, you know a lot of things and most of us would probably tend to use that but this is a good way to do it a little differently. And then of course you have uh, the ladder going in and out and it's a makeshift one. It looks to be um, sparking wires for the, 
hand handle part. And then uh, metal grate shelves for the steps. The glass again, repeat of the clock, really nice. Over here we have a little, um, oh, okay, so this is the winding river. Wow, that must be really huge then. Because I know it's pretty curvy in parts. But yeah, the sound is pretty rough. So yeah, so winding river to avoid the sound that the rushing waterfall makes. Is that the same with this one then? This looks like a little jacuzzi kind of thing. You just need some bubbles and stuff. You got the drain doubled for you know seating and the, the frame itself for this. Size 14, yeah, that's huge for the water anyway. And then we have a little um, massage table back here. It's just the, the new medical table. Um, cleverly using the little uh, bit here for the handle for the, um, the towel rack. And then uh, just a cushion there for the head. And all their little magic potions, rubbing oils or whatever you call it. And then this, they've got this like it's incense, you know, they're burning some aromatherapy kind of thing. So they got different uh, little bits in there. I think that's the, yeah, the top of the lot hookah so that you get that smoke kind of bit going on. I think that's the, I, I always want to call it the fancy bar. I know that's not what it's called, but that's what it looks like. I don't know what this part here is. Is that one of those metal plates again? inside there to kind of look like a little bit of water. Yeah, for some reason the, the water has some weird effects on things. It's kind of like the one plot where they had the waterfalls and they had that the glass covering the whole bottom of the, the plot. But if you go behind the waterfall, it's like having uh, invisible, you know, uh, x-ray vision you could see just the ground it was like you could split it and you see the the ground but no ground ground but no ground it was really weird but yeah this turned out really lovely I mean even look at the lighting up here how they did the the paneling nice and bright did you use like some special lighting or is that uh, maybe a uh, a gear trophy for all that bright white or is just just layered glass yeah it does it really uh, works nicely because it felt really dark in here earlier because you just left it um, you know all that wood this really brightens it up 15 layers of glass and then turn framed glass for the pattern. Yeah, that's that's a lot. But that works really good for, like, if someone's looking for some, um, like, uh, fluorescent lighting, they can just make those um, long tubes. That's a really good way of handling that. It really opens it up. Awesome job. Among my favorites. I'll be coming here for the pool. <laughs> Maybe for an apartment, I don't know. So that's a uh, Ductor Nose Protostar Future Living. Let's just get a last little look with that pretty sunset going on there. <clears throat> so our next one is, um, let me make sure I get this right. If I can read my spelling, God, my handwriting is such awful. Uh, the next one is Croson Croya. I, I think I'm saying that right. Croson Croya. Something like that. Apologies if it's wrong, but that's how I'm reading it. Um, this is called the Underwater Mine. 
and I really like um, how they've done this. We've seen a few underwater plots before, um, and it's always a challenge because um, usually people will use the underwater sky, but then that kind of intrudes on, um, you know, your internal buildings, you know, your custom buildings because the bubbles come through and all that. And this person's found a way to make it look like, un, you know, they're underwater without using that sky feature. So um, I, I really wanted to show it so that those that are looking to come up with ideas for that, um, maybe this one's, you know, help inspire them. So you're going to see a lot of different things that I'm probably not going to be able to name because I, I can't be sure exactly what they're using, but I'm going to do my best to make some good guesswork here. So for this little bit, um, I know that they're using the, um, looks like the gear, uh, the gear lamp, um, possibly inset of the, uh, it looks like the red moon vent, but I, I think it's actually a different piece. But um, if you can't tell, it looks like a giant um, ichthyan container that has the bubbles. So you've got these huge bubbles coming out to make this water bit. But you can see how it's this, the tank, and I think this is part of the tank bottom. And uh, then they've just kind of boxed it in with glass and it helps it just looks like you're looking through a window into some some water filled area and of course they've got um, you know strain bits and things but the bubbles really help um, if you can find nice tanks and things uh, that um, have that little animation and that you can get it to show, it really helps um, sell the idea that there's water out there. Uh, the reason I think it's the Ichthyan tank is because of the coloring. Um, it's so bright. It's almost difficult to see all of the detail in there unless you get really close. Um, sometimes you can alter that by the lighting that you choose. Um, I think uh, the darker the room, the better uh, that you can see through it. Because um, um, I know uh, when I was working on the plot for a guildmate, um, they really wanted the Ichthyan tanks, but we couldn't hardly see anything until they changed the lighting, and that helped. But you can see, like, they've got the uh, the tentacle plant to kind of look like a jellyfish floating in there, and then they've got different types of greenery, bushes and things to kind of look like a little bit of uh, you know, landscaping. It's kind of hard to see a lot of the details, but uh, they filled it in so it looks good. So onward up to the next little bit of level. So again, you know, kind of like uh, they're wanting it to look like there's um, floaty bits. So they've like got this tube and there's um, things floating and they've chosen um, items that move. So you have like one of the hovering tanks, you've got the robot that kind of bounces and then the, the hover barrel that also has kind of a motion to it so that it looks like even though it's just glass and there's actually no water in here, it gives that illusion that the tank, the, the tube is surrounded by a tube of water um, because they're using these moving elements. It's just a, a fun way of, of portraying that, you know, you give the illusion of it. <clears throat> so here we enter... Um, uh, I don't know what this would be called, um, some kind of uh, landing area. This is where you come into the facility. I don't know if this is meant to be like it's flooded um, with the glass because obviously you're just walking on it, but I think this is supposed to be like it's flooded with water. And uh, then out here, this is your only glimpse of like a, well, not the only glimpse, but one of the glimpses of an outside where you can see the level of the water. So you have the little um, watercraft that comes in and, and dumps you off and you come through. Nice bit of sky there. That looks looks like a Chua uh, spotlight for some kind of lighting on that, just to give it some extra brightness. So it's like almost like you're coming into like a lagoon and you come into this mine here. <clears throat> see if I can hop up here so we can see. I think the last time I did it, I actually went into yeah, went into the the bubbles. 
But you can see they've got a, a pair of domes for this little island thing. I don't know what this is supposed to represent, um, but it looks like a exile chandelier. And then, um, oh, I want to say it's the uh, the Elden holographic uh, decor that um, is giving that little, like, like it's drilling into it or something. And then, of course, these are uh, domes, cylinders, and then you've got the little escape pod here. Again, I don't know what this is supposed to represent, but it looks interesting. Uh, you know, the Ichthian um, little panel there. Lots of little different buttons and lights. So you've got the, like I said, the, uh, the gear lamps. That's one of the protostar lamps, I think. Um, this kind of hard to see in the lighting because it just went dark on me, but um, I know that's the uh, Granok hatch that doesn't function. Um, I don't know, bottom of or top of some of the tanks. Just little gadgets and things that you would imagine would belong in here. Hanging wires and stuff. That's exile sign. That kind of stuff. So I, I don't know what this room is really supposed to be, but uh, there you go. So we head off to the next section, and uh, enter a different type of piping. Notice the little sparking wire. There's a little bit of damage there. And then we come up on another glimpse of the underwater scene. So again, they're using a tank, and it looks like it might be one or two kind of mushed together. I'm not sure. Uh, it might even be just kind of slanted a little bit so that the bubbles kind of shoot out at an angle. And I think you can see the top of it there. And uh, just filled it with a lot of foliage. There's even uh, a little uh, trunk that's been lost, the airtight container, and then they got a chest there. Lots of flowers. There's some of the... Uh, you can tell how the colors are muted because that's like the the blood fire grass, I think. And uh, some of the um, Galeris plants, I think that's part of the um, crimson bone bloom flower sticking up. There's those feed me Seymour plants. But again, the bubbles really help. Uh, sell it. I think you're seeing the sky there with the, the lights and everything. But it, it works really nice. And you don't have that issue of the underwater sky intruding on the tube. The tube looks clear and empty like it's supposed to. Um, these, I don't know what they're using for that. I imagine it's one of the new spaceship lights. Because it's got the weird symbols on it, but I can't be sure. So here we have another glimpse, and there's the actual Chua house out, out in the midst there. I haven't found a way to actually get out there to get into it. I don't think you're meant to. I think they've just left it be. But it looks like a, some kind of a craft that's down below, part of the mining. But again, that tank has been used very cleverly to so that you still see the bubbles and... Uh, of course, the coloring really works nicely, and they've just built this facility around it. So we'll go here. If you're looking at this little uh, bleeping little uh, oh, okay, the lights are fancy lamps. We'll see. That tells you how much I know. Those I know are Chua spotlights there. Let me go back. Ah, uh, yeah, with the green. That, uh, I didn't know I had, like, these little weird symbols in there, though. Strange. Anyway, um, these are uh, the detonator lights. Um, we've seen some spell out little letters with them, um, like... Uh, 
you know, indications of exit or something. And this is a way of kind of saying this is an important room, little wing. And uh, so we go up and we start getting a little hint of the surface of the water. So you see some, you know, it looks like they're using the strain ground um, for the flooring. A little bit of rocks. You can see a floating um, hover uh, hover barrel there. A little bit more color. I think it's mostly uh, glass that they're using here now. There's not a tank, um, but they are using plants and stuff that have a little bit of motion to help, you know, feed that that illusion that there's actual water. Um, that should be the red lantern. Here again, you can see that there's the surface of the water. You've got some plants hanging midway. Again, they're using the uh, animated bits to kind of feed that idea that there's actual water there. Lots of motion. And here they've got like water coming, you know, showing through here. And then if we go further up. You know, spot like it. Then we come into where they've lined it up so that it's like that's the top of the water level. It's just matching the edge of that um, winding river or whatever that they're using uh, with the top of the glass. They just kind of set the glass in layered it up so it looks a little hazy and, and bluish, you know, for water. Works really good. If you're doing like a fish tank or something, this would work really nice as well. So there you have a glimpse of the outer bit, some of the facility there. Continue up some more. I'm going to get lost here. I just know it. I'm going to forget where I've been. And this brings you to the actual outside. This is your one little bit to the exterior, the little garden area. I imagine they're using uh, either a massive umbrella tree or a uh, snowy hill upside down to get this extra ground up here on this level. Notice I can't walk any further. They've built it so that it's kind of blocked off. You can only go out so far, but it looks as if you could go further. There's a little waterfall a bit. I can get up there. See, this is probably bits you're not supposed to get into, but <laughs> I'm being nosy and snoopy. The fun little idea, you know, you get a little breather from the underground bit. You know, if someone gets a little claustrophobic, they can come out into the garden. Okay, so let's go back down. There's an, another glimpse. Is that the part we saw? Yeah, that's what we saw. Notice the little different panels and lighting. I think a lot of these uh, blue lights, I know that's the bottom, I think, of um, the uh, early warning system, the little cage with the bird, dead bird in it. And uh, then uh, this is one of the new, um, I think it's one of the, the ship pieces. Yeah, that's a good clue. I didn't even notice. Ducky's pointing out that you got little snow clumps coming off of your feet. That tells you that's a snowy hill. Because it still acts as if it's snow, even though there's you don't see it. That's, I guess, the only downside to that. But if that's the, the only downside, it's worth it because it's... So handy for people to be able to, to add elevations and different kinds of uh, landscaping to their plot that they weren't able to do, at least 
not cheaply. I mean, the massive umbrella tree was there before, but for a lot of people, it just wasn't a feasible option. Okay, let's see. Now I gotta remember which way we. Did I, did I miss a spot up here? I think I missed something, didn't I? Let me go back, make sure. Yeah, there was this bar here. And these are just um, the blue light tables, the lounge table, and the drinking table. I still haven't gotten a hold of one of those. I think it's PvP related. So here's a glimpse a little further down. Um, again, you've got the tank with the bubbles. See how bright that is? Almost too bright. And that kills a lot of the coloring and stuff. But, you know, it works nice to kind of, you know, continue that little bit of uh, underwaterness. So here I think is the generator room or something. I don't know. Doesn't look like we can go inside it. But um, using several layers of glass here, you got that uh, gear lamp. And then they're using, it looks a little frozen. I mean, there's like um, icicles hanging off. Looks like part of the frozen lake for some of it. And they're uh, using the uh, the blue flares for that smoke. The cooling system maybe, and it's kind of like a little overboard. There's lots of ice and stuff. I don't know. It looks like there's cryopods too, so I don't know. Maybe it's where the people come, uh, cryo storage or something, something like that. <clears throat> okay, I think I caught it all now on this part. Yeah. Certainly don't want to miss anything. So back we go this way. And down. And then we go to where the panels are. That's where we come from, and that's where we went into, and this is where we go this way. Here's another glimpse. That's the, the Chua house there. Look at those giant bubbles. It's huge. Uh, ergonomics keyboards. Just to kind of break the monotony of the tunnels, they just add little elements here and there. So I think we're getting into like some of the, like here's like a little table. It's just the display panel and then they've got it inset and so there's their drinks and stuff. That's a skinny wasted barrel. Um, again, another one of those tanks that they're using. Notice they're sealing it, kind of filling it in where it doesn't, because the tank itself is kind of uh, bigger on the top, and I think it narrows down, and they fill it in with rocks to kind of just blend it in a little better. I think this is some of the new spacecraft stuff. I don't recognize that off the top of my head. And this, if you're wondering what that is, that's just the holographic sign, and they've sunk it in, so you don't see the lettering, you just see that little boop, 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 little bit. Where's the giant beer cooler? Is that what that was, the thing I called the cryo thing? Let's see. Um, I think those again are some kind of spaceship. Is that the little? I don't know what those are. That looks like the end of the the Granok thing. I'm so getting so bad about naming stuff. And so here's the actual mining um, part, and it's just down into the mine, and they've got the water filling it up. 
it's one way to kind of keep your fab kit, but uh, use it in a fun, interesting way. For anyone that actually wants to come to this plot to mine, they're probably upset because there's you have to go through a lot just to get to it. And I, I think that's it. I, I hope I didn't miss anything because I don't see another exit or anything in here. It's a buoyant blue crystal there. But I like the concept, and I definitely like their use of the tanks on the outside to really help play, you know, sell the idea that it's underwater without having to resort to using the underwater sky. I think a lot of people, it's like when we do snow plots, everybody wants the snow, the falling snow, but you can't do that if you've got a custom house on it because it goes right through the walls. It kind of kills it. So I, th I think we found all the bits. Just checking one more time. We'll revisit the... the garden area, I guess. I like this in particular. I like the, the way that's done. Good for washers um, with having that extra little movement to make it look like it's really, I mean, you know, the edge doesn't move like it's supposed to, but the a good concept, good way of doing it. Okay, so I think I think I hope that we got it all. So that was Croson Croya's underwater mine.